Hello and welcome to the Charles River Conservancy Parkland Show. My name is Renata von Scharner. I'm the founder and president of the Charles River Conservancy. And as with in all these shows, we talk about the Charles River. But what would the Charles River be without trees? We, today we're going to talk about trees. And I have with me a landscape architect. Hello, Elena Saporta. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Elena is a landscape architect who lives in Cambridge. And we're going to talk about the trees, the most beautiful trees, probably anywhere in Cambridge, along Memorial Drive. And they, somebody calls them matrimonial trees, and that's Caroline Tribe, and I want to dedicate this show to her because she has been very generous towards tree there. And we're going to talk about those wonderful sycamore trees, plane trees. So, um, the Charles River Conservancy, um, is very happy to that this topic comes up. We work from the uh, Watertown Dam down to the Boston Harbor and this little green band along the water is all state owned, all by the DCR and so we work on that green um, band and then we have the, with the luck to have people like Elena come in and talk about different things. So um, the Conservancy is an organization that got started in 2000. We have uh, 2000 volunteers every year who do landscaping and we will see a picture of where they work. And making people aware of the wonderful assets of the river is part of it. We also want to bring swimming back, we built a skate park, we're making it easier to bike and trees are always at the center of it all. So. Elena, I'd like you to speak about Green Cambridge. You're on the board of Green Cambridge. That's correct. Yes. As well as on the board of overseers of the Emerald Necklace. Tell us about Green Cambridge. So uh, Green Cambridge was originally uh, Green Decade Cambridge. It was established about the same time as the Charles River Conservancy. And then in 2011, it changed the name to Green Cambridge. Uh, the the uh, president and CEO and chairman of the board is uh, Quinton Zondervan who happens to be running for, for city council now. And we have an executive director, Steve Nutter, who joined us a, a year ago. Great, great. So let's get looking at these wonderful um, sycamore trees. I mean, it's, it's, it's still feels summer today, but soon it will be winter and these white trees are just so powerful. Absolutely, and, and the patterns on the bark are, are really, uh, wonderful works of art. So. Um, this is the map that um, I think was Charles Elliott uh, worked on that. You, um, we, it's hard to see because it's um, fairly small but he showed, he planted every, he, he planned it out all, all along in the, in the 19th century. That's correct. It's 131 trees altogether. That he planted. Yes. Yeah. So they're 120 years old now. Yes, exactly. This year they turned 120, the oh, oldest of the trees. Yeah, yeah. So this is the area we are looking at, Memorial Drive. And here uh, is the River Bend Park. That's also the area that is closed on Sunday for um, bicycling and inline skating. And I mentioned earlier that Charles River Conservancy's volunteer program, every dot that you see here represents uh, an event that our volunteer coordinator Sasha Vallier organizes for university students, for corporations, high schools, your, your group, anybody um, is welcome to come and arrange an event and she will bring the tools necessary for that. So back to our wonderful memorial trees and um, it's probably the most welcoming thing when you arrive in Cambridge, you come from the turnpike and suddenly are greeted by these beautiful trees. For me that always means I'm home, this is, this is my, where my heart is. So um, Inventing the Charles River is a book that the Charles River Conservancy co-published with the MIT Press, written by Carl Hagland. And if you're interested in trees, in the history of the Charles, go to get that book. Um, it's um, uh, fascinating. It was 18 years of research by Carl Hagland for his PhD. And in that book, 
also tells the story, the Battle of the Sycamores in 1964, where Eddie Bernays and John Mood were involved. So it has this image juxtaposed with what was proposed for Memorial Drive. And then John Mood mobilized people with white balloons. So you see people here um, carrying white balloons and Memorial Drive would have gone all the way to that row of people with their white balloons and, and would have wiped out many of the sycamores. It would have wiped out many of these trees. So, Elena, I would like you now to tell us um, what, um, what you have been doing um, about these trees. Yes, so we decided to um, inventory the trees and we started with the area where the, most of the large trees are, are concentrated. It's the stretch of road of Memorial Drive between Ash Street and JFK. Uh, we inventoried 55 trees. Uh, we, we, uh, did, we identified the condition of the trees. We measured the calipers of the trees and then we, um, so as well as the, the, yeah. the distance between yeah. trees. And we, we discovered that the historic spacing was uh, between 39 and 40 feet. So it's, it, that can serve as a guide for any future plantings. On the map, uh, any tree that's in green is uh, over four feet in diameter, a, a caliper. And then the, the red trees are the ones, the blue trees are the ones uh, four feet and under. Uh, the trees with a red dot in the middle are trees that are not in good condition. And then the light green trees are, they're not trees, they're locations spaces. where... Spaces. Spaces. <laughs> spaces where trees could go. So we've identified 22 empty spots yeah. that are available for planting. Yeah. And I remember I was bicycling home, I think, with my groceries, and I saw you doing inventory. So yes, you, yes. you so, have um, been doing this inventory. This is just the beginning of it. Yes, yeah, so um, the inventory was done by uh, myself, uh, Flory Westcote, who's a co-chair of the Committee on Public Planting for the City of Cambridge, and arborist uh, Dave Eggers with Darwin Tree Care. So it's, so it's you, very every thorough. tree has a number? So every you... tree, yes. If, if you see the trees uh, on Memorial Drive, each one has a little brass tag. Oh, so you put a brass tag on yes. it? No, we didn't put the brass tag. They're, they're already there. Dad, did you know who put them there? I imagine uh, MDC or DCR. Oh. Yeah, so every single tree is labeled, wow. which makes it very easy to, yeah. to do the inventory. And you also told me that you once notified the DCR about branches that are dead or yes. about to come down. Yes. Yeah, so we identified which branches were hazardous, so the ones overhanging the, the walkways as well as the road. And I wrote a letter to Patrice Kish with the DCR. And it was amazing. Within two days, there was a crew out there removing those branches. Wow, this so. is the way we, we would lo we love DCR to work. And, and Patrice, obviously, she was, was very responsive. Absolutely. And, and so we're very, very grateful. grateful for that. So um, let's look at um, this picture here. Yeah, so this, this is a photograph taken in 1999. It's looking west. Uh, close to JFK. On the right side of this slide is the St. John's Monastery and then the, uh, the buildings, the residential buildings mm. uh, beyond. So what you see here is a fairly intact uh, alley of trees on both sides of Memorial Drive. And then uh, by contrast, on the next slide, um, this is a, a photograph taken a few weeks ago, same spot. And the trees on the north side of the street are pretty much intact. However, on the south side of the street, there are many gaps, as you can see. Yeah. And so we're trying to investigate what happened. Yeah. And so tell us, tell us a bit now. You have done the inventory, and you have identified um, spots of where you'd like to tree, have tree planted. What are, the, what are your next steps? in, you call it the Heritage Tree Campaign? Uh, yes, so the Green Cambridge has come up with the name Heritage Tree Program, and we're working with certain allies, uh, such as River Bend Trust and mm -hmm. Charles River Conservancy, and we're identifying other supporters. And we would like to, uh, first of all, examine the soils 
and see if, if there are problems with compaction. So go, go, go into more detail. What, what does the soil analysis, what does that entail? So the soil analysis will tell us if there's uh, an abundance of salt, for instance, how compacted the soils are, what the nutrient levels are, you know, if, if uh, water is reaching the roots, and uh, if there's been damage from snow plows or from um, sewer work, so we're still trying to get to the bottom of why the trees are, are doing better on one side and not the other. Yeah, yeah. So. And I can imagine, I mean, there's a, uh, um, trucks are not allowed out there. And there's probably a good reason because the, the vibrations of trucks also affect trees. So I hope That's you'll true. take trucks into account as well. Because Absolutely, the yes. The number of trucks has definitely increased there and they're not allowed there. So um, maybe there's a... Another partnership Another there quarter, yes, is yes. Northeastern because they have students that take counts of um, vehicles. So I, I already spoke with Peter first there. Oh, yes. So um, he might be uh, open to, to discuss that um, because um, it, the trucks do play a, a role. Absolutely. Now, um, these great trees, It's we um, maybe we want to go back um, to the this picture here. Um, obviously, it would be nice that if you have missing teeth, just to replace the teeth. Yes, yes. But tell us a bit about the challenges of replacing trees that are missing. What are the, the challenges there? So, uh, one of the main things is, I, I suspect that we'll have to replace most of the soils in the new planting areas because they've been compacted and have been uh, infused with salt over the years. So I think we need to give them a fresh, a fresh start. A fresh start. And, and can you build an uh, infrastructure that is more resilient than what's there? Yes, uh, we can have better soil mixes that retain water or that provide nutrients. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And then another thing that has been recommended by, by arborist is to do some deep root fertilization. It was done uh, 30 years ago and then more recently. We did it recently, yes, and we, we, we did some fertilization of these trees, but it needs to be done again. It needs to be done again, but the trees have responded quite well when they have been fertilized. So, yeah, yeah. So. And, and many of you might have been at the Head of the Charles, which is a great event for rowers. It's not just a great event for the trees and for no, the grass, no, no. because there are these heavy trucks that, that really pound down on, on the roots and it's very hard for the trees. So I hope that in future years the Conservation Commission will ask to do stay away further from the trees, particularly from newly planted trees. That's a good trees. start, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And some of you might have seen there are quite a few newly planted trees around the Anderson Bridge. And these trees were planted by MassDOT as part of the mitigation of the, the trees that were removed around um, the Anderson Bridge renovation. So we are delighted to, to see those trees, and I hope Mass DOT will water them. Yes. Uh, because it's as simple as that. If you don't water a tree, it's not going to survive. So um, I'm happy to report that the new trees planted along Greener Boulevard by Herb Nolan Solomon Foundation and the, the Garden Club of Cambridge and CPA helped DCR. It was a wonderful partnership. And the Charles River Conservancy is now watering those trees. So it's, and they're doing well. I, I they're understand. doing well. Yes. They're doing their few, maybe 5% that need to be replaced. And That's very low. Yes. And, and mm -hmm. we went out with Peter Del Tredici and he, he advised us on what kind of species would be good there because um, although I love the sycamores, it's probably not the best tree to survive in an urban environment with vibrations and with salt. So they are, um, in, on Greener Boulevard, there is a wider range of, of mixed mm -hmm. trees. So it's easier if you don't, don't just have one kind of tree. So tell us, you a landscape architect, tell us a bit more about, um, about the word sycamore. Some people call it London plane tree. Is yes. there? Is so so uh, sycamore is a general term for, um, it's in Latin it would be the Platinus genus, and the, the trees on Mem Drive have been um, identified as London Plains. London Plains are a mix of a, an American sycamore 
and a, an eastern sycamore. Mm -hmm. So it's a cross between Occidentalis and Orientalis. Oh, wow, somebody really goes into the Latin. Good for you, <laughs> yeah. good for you. Um, so um, let's look at those trees. So you showed us the historic comparison. Um, Memorial Drive and the area underneath those trees, and we definitely see there are some major gaps here on the right, is also the place where um, it's car free on Sunday. And I remember when I came to this country in 79, I think I first met Isabella Halstead, a lady in sneakers who lived right there. And she was there counting the number of adults and children who would enjoy the Sunday, the Sunday closures. And she was the one who originally raised the money for the barricades to oh, be put okay. there. She paid for the MDC staff that was needed for that. For the opening of that park, she threw a frisbee with Mike Dukakis and they rode in a horse carriage. And now it it's, has become a tradition and it's the perfect place to learn how to inline skate, to learn how to bike. It's the most beautiful place to be on a Sunday. I agree, absolutely. Yeah. And, and this particular photograph uh, doesn't do it justice because there are quite a few more people typically on a Sunday. Yeah, and, yeah. and it attracts some um, inline skaters. They have competitions of jumping, going around cones. It's, it's very it's very popular and it's just a beautiful spot on Sunday. It's perfect for families. Yeah, yeah. And tell us about this image. So this is a charcoal drawing, very large, almost full-size drawing of, um, it's called a sycamore triptych. Ah. And it's part of a series of, of drawings of the sycamore trees mm. along Mem Drive. And if you'd like to see them, they're tucked away in a small lounge at, on the second floor of the, the second floor lobby of the Charles uh, Hotel. Oh, that's where they are. Yeah. That's so powerful. They're beautiful. I yes. mean, the, the, the beauty of those trees is, is just never ending and they change so much from the summer to the winter. And um, so we're very lucky. So they are in the Charles Hotel. Yes. If you go up the escalator, they're at the top. Wonderful. Right there, so. And here, you would think this is an oil painting, but <laughs> tell us what it is. This is uh, the bark of a sycamore, and you, it looks like camouflage, but the, you, there's so many different colors, and it's a joy to, to, to walk around and photograph, do close-ups of the bark. Yeah, and um, so you look, when you inventory the trees, you look at the canopy and whether there are any dead, dead um, branches. Do you also... Can you, can you find indicators in the bark of whether the trees are healthy? Uh, one of the main things I look at is the base of the tree. And if the tree has what's called a flare, which if it, it tapers at the base, that's mm -hmm. a very good sign. So it's, it's where the, the trunk joins the root structure. Any tree that's going straight down is probably in trouble. Mm -hmm. It means that it was probably planted too deep. So mm. trees, it's, it's a fun thing to look for. If you, if you look around and you see trees with good flares, good root flares, yeah. that's a very, very good sign. Another thing to look at is uh, if the, the top of the tree, the crown, the leader is in, in good shape mm. and that you don't have die back there. Yeah. What I so. saw along Memorial Drive where they have now removed about a third of the mm. trees, many of the trees that didn't do well, mm. they, they were sprouts coming yes. out yes. at the bottom of the of the trunk. That, that, that seems like an indication of, help me, I'm, I'm about to die. <laughs> uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that. Sometimes it, it, uh, the sprouting can occur where th there's been damage. You know, if, if a, a vehicle, a snowplow, for instance, hit it in that location. And so the so, tree tries to... To bounce back. To bounce back. <laughs> because yeah. it's trying to create more chlorophyll. So it's another place where leaves can grow. I see. And, and uh, make food for the tree. But a perfectly healthy tree that has been planted well wouldn't do that. It shouldn't, no. It shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you also, um, as, as an overseer at the Emerald Necklace, you were involved in helping oversee the writing of a tree inventory. Yes. Uh, well, I, I reviewed some of the documents at the time. 
So what are some of the lessons? There's so many wonderful trees in it on the emerald necklace. What can we learn um, of that inventory and of the work that has been done? What can we learn for the Charles River? So I think that there are quite a few parallels, particularly along the parkways, because again, you have a lot of uh, fast moving traffic, you have uh, salt and you have air pollution. So many of the same challenge and the compacted soil. So many of the conditions are, are quite similar. Mm. So there, there are lessons to be learned. One thing that has been done at the Emerald Necklace is uh, there's been a sulfur, um, a sulfur treatment and a, a gypsum treatment. And that's one way to tie up some of the salt that's in the soil. Mm. I, I, I think it's too early to tell how well it's been working, but it's, it's something that we might want to explore along, yeah, yeah. along Memorial Drive as well. Let's look at another one of these great images yeah. of, of the trees. Um, so you've um, spoken about the inventory that you, you're doing. Um, is, that, is that inventory complete already? Uh, so we have done a, a thorough inventory of the 55 trees between JFK and Ash Street. Mm -hmm. But we are also, we started the inventory of the trees to the east and west of that. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you're going to look at the soil. Yes. And yes. Then, um, then you're going to look at how to um, bring in new trees, planting new ones. Is yes. that part yes. of your effort? Absolutely. And so we're looking for partners. Uh, Green Cambridge has identified this project as a heritage tree program because we feel these are truly a part of our heritage. And so we're, um, we're working with allies to come yeah. up with a, a plan to move forward. Yeah. Well, you know, I can't imagine anybody in Cambridge who's not enamored with those trees and, and identifies those. Um, I, I have a, a, a picture, I don't have it here, um, where with my children and they have garlands in their head oh. because we're walking to May Day, oh. which is the celebration of the 1st of May. That is where Revels plays a key role, there's a maypole and this singing and dancing. And, and for me, these trees symbolize the, the richness of, of Cambridge, Cambridge's traditions. And um, it's one of the most beautiful spots um, in Cambridge combined with the river. So I'm very grateful that Green Cambridge and you are taking that on. And, um, so you say you're looking for partners, so you already have worked with um, the Tree Committee of Cambridge? The, the, yeah, the Cambridge Tree Committee, DCR, uh, Charles River Conservancy, yeah. uh, the Riverbend Park Trust, yeah. and uh, we're also allying with different groups at Harvard, and we've also worked with the volunteers at Green Cambridge, and I'd like to thank them for all their great work. Yeah, and we have a picture here of how, um, so, greencambridge.org, that is how people can, can get in touch with you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. So, um, Elena, I'm very grateful that you you take on these wonderful matrimonial trees. <laughs> I love that name, I must say. And, um, and we look forward to working with you. And I hope that you will also um, not only document um, the inventory, but also all the research because um, it needs to be done not just there, but maybe in other areas. Absolutely. And so all the good work you're doing um, needs to be carefully documented. And I hope you will keep the Conservancy involved and informed. Absolutely. Because as you, as you might know, we have um, an e-newsletter um, with 15,000 recipients. And if you want to be on that e-newsletter, uh, you go to our website, it's the charles.org. Uh, we are a membership organization. Actually, we are not officially a membership organization, but we have a lot of people who support us. And if you would like to support our work, we depend on individuals and foundations and corporations, and they help our efforts. So if you're interested in that, go to our website and learn more about other efforts we have been working on the underpass on the Anderson Bridge, which is more to help bicycling. 
and um, because we feel that the parklands are because of the trees they're so beautiful and we want many people to enjoy it for walking for running for inline skating for bicycling so that's what we do. And so I want to thank you oh, for thank you. For it's all been a work. real pleasure. Thank you for having me today. And here is how, how you can um, get in touch with the Charles River Conservancy. Um, I will now put the image on that shows you um, how you can get hold of me and of the Conservancy, and if you have any questions um, or concerns, please let us know. Thank you so much.